I was supposed to tell her something you faxed me, you said about uh, the response to Margaret. And uh, you put in brackets, what? I've been feeling lazy. I'm blaming having had COVID-19. Of course, I've been blaming everything on having had COVID-19. It really is the built-in excuse for everything here in 2020. Uh, you don't even have to have COVID-19. Just blame COVID-19. Uh, Rolly and I do that. Uh, if uh, I'm supposed to sign a bunch of stuff, and uh, I do sign all of the stuff, and he's going through it, and I missed one of them. It's COVID-19. <laughs> COVID-19 is just uh, upsetting our lives in, uh, in ways that we, we, we are just barely being able to understand right now. So apart from the fact that COVID-19, if you contract it, can kill you inside of 15 minutes, uh, it also is causing all of the deficiencies and problems that we have as human beings. If it wasn't for COVID-19, everything would be going smoothly and perfectly. And moving on to, uh, hi, Matt, and this is, this is the Michael R. of Easton, Pennsylvania, uh, in his own self. Question for Dave, will there only be 150 signed and numbered sets of high society, the Regency edition? Or will there be tiers of the Regency edition? Uh, we'll answer that one first. Uh, yes to both questions. There will be tiers. And uh, when, when you see the price on the tiers, T-I-E-R-S, there will be tiers, T-E-A-R-S. Trust me on that one. The reason I ask is because I saw a price range of $125 to $295. Gulp. I hope the $295 version comes with a night at the Regency. Laugh out loud. Also, I'm guessing that there won't be a Kickstarter, Kickstarter with this one, and it'll only be available at We Really Press. Uh, and you answered that one. I know this is more of a question for the fine folks at We Really Press, but he asked, so I am asking, anything about Ardbert Van Heim's collaborations with the Waverly Press that you're allowed to talk about, or is that still all, quote, backstage pass, unquote, stuff? that you and I know and everybody else can guess at. Uh, well, I can talk about whatever I want to talk about. Well, well, <laughs> so, let, me, let me interrupt for a second. So the prices that Michael saw were from the proof copy of the expanded edition of service number one that I got from oh, Dagan. Okay. See, there you go. That's, uh, and what what happened was I got all this stuff from Dagan and it was really neat. So I made a video going through. This is what it's going to look like. This is what you've paid for. This is, you know, the, these things actually exist. You know, some of this is proofs, but some of this is the final product that will be shipped to your house if you back the Kickstarter. And I, it was like a 12-minute video, and I said what was proofs and what wasn't. And at the very end, I showed the inside back cover saying this is the this is what, you know, because it's an ad for the Regency edition. And I put it out on the internet, and then I forgot about it because it was, okay, here's, for anyone interested, this is what it looks like. And Rich Johnston at Bleeding Cool ran an article of, now we have a price for the Regency edition. It's going to cost this much for definite. And And immediately I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, I went back, watched the video. I'm like, yeah, I didn't make a point of saying at the end of the video, this is a proof ad for this. And I'm and I'm smacking my head going, why Why do I do this to myself? And I, I let Dagan know, and he's like, well, any publicity is good publicity. And I'm like, okay. What, what a give up show business? Hey, and, I, uh, yeah, you, you find out that... You become the source of these things that people are very, very curious about. And it's like, uh, I wonder how many government leaks are like that. It's like, I didn't mean to leak that. I was uh, I was sending them a, photo, a photocopy of something else, and it just happened to have it on the same page. But now that's all over the front page of the Washington Post. And it's like, uh, yeah, 
story, that's, that's how that works. Okay, on, on my side of this, uh, a, as everyone knows, on a moment of service, as all long-time service fans know, I'm not a hardcovers guy. Uh, there's the 16 trade paperbacks of service, uh, and the and the remastered edition of those 16 trade paperbacks. From my point of view, that's the finished Cerebus work. This is this is how it looks best. Um, if you do a hardcover, uh, you're just spoiling it uh, because. I, there isn't a single hardcover format that I've seen anywhere that I like. I, I, as I say, I'm just not a hardcovers guy, and that puts me very much in the memori- uh, minority. Uh, and the pressure, of course, has been enormous for years. Um, do a hardcover. Why aren't you doing hardcovers? It needs to be served as hardcover. Uh, anytime I ask for suggestions, anybody got suggestions over here? Yeah, you can do hardcover. Um, so, okay, we'll try a hardcover, High Society. Uh, this came up because uh, I got a, uh, Dagan sent me the Waverly Press, uh, Jimi Hendrix book, uh, with, uh, you know, the photographers, Rolling Stone photos of, uh, of Jimi Hendrix, all of them uh, in there. And I went, yeah, Dagan always does absolutely perfect books. As soon as you get a book from Dagan, uh, you just sit there thumbing through it going, I'm really, I'm really glad that I own this. Uh, I'm not really, I wouldn't have put the subject matter anywhere near the top of my personal list things to be interested in, but if Dagan James is involved in doing a book about it, uh, you will get sucked in, and if you don't watch yourself, you have to read the whole book from cover to cover, because it's just so cool, and then just sit there looking at it, and then if you don't put it away somewhere, you'll keep looking at it. He's, uh, he has uncanny expertise for doing uh, ideal hardcovers for people who want um, a hardcover and uh, a book. Um, My only interest, because I'm not a hardcover guy, like Dagan will send me uh, number one, number two, and number three for the Serapis Archive, Uh, I can't really picture myself looking at it because it's like, well, no, the, uh, the High Society Remastered Edition, the one that we just did with uh, brand new pages and everything, um, that's that's what this is in terms of the inside, but uh, the format just looks fun. I just I just don't like hardcovers. I don't like the uh, the way that the way that they look and what they do to the interior pages. So my only interest. I'll be completely honest about this, is how much money does Aardvark Vanheim get? Which, uh, when Dagan got interested right away, I said, you know, I phoned him uh, after, uh, you know, just fawning over this uh, Jimi Hendrix book and going, uh, do you want to work on something together? Do you want to do a book? Because uh, I have 100% confidence in you that if I just give you, here's the raw materials for the book, you, uh, you're you're going to put the book together, and you're going to do it as a Dagan James book. Uh, I don't I don't have to give it a second thought. It's going to be really really cool, and the service fans will just love it. And uh, you went. Uh, what about a hardcover? Uh, hardcover of uh, or hardcovers of the Cerebus trade paperback? <laughs> it's like I don't want to do hardcovers of the Cerebus trade paperbacks, but it's like that's where his interest is is if I'm going to do a uh, Dave Sims hardcover, uh, hardcover of some kind, uh, this is what I want to do. And it's like, and of course, at that point, uh, we were in pre-production, virtually at the production stage. Everything was at Mark 
and they were just uh, blocking in printing time for the latest high society trade paperback. And it was like, well, okay, if we're if we're going to do this, now would be the time to do this because you can just add uh, X number of uh, copies to the print run. So that's what we agreed to do. Again, on the basis of we'll try a hardcover. And my my only interest is how much money does Aardvark Manaheim get? Which means uh, Dagan has complete carte blanche to price them at whatever he wants to price them by adding whatever add-ons he's going to add to it so that you go, oh, that's so cool. I mean, that's just tucked inside the book. But as soon as I opened the book, there it was. And that's just so cool. Okay, I'm going to put this over here while I come through the book. Oh, here's something else that came in, uh, the clamshell or whatever it was. Um, the most recent and most lavish book that uh, Waverly Press did was uh, uh, Michael, I'm going to forget his name, the photographer who uh, took took a lot of pictures of the Rolling Stones. Wasn't their official photographer, but did a lot of photos of the Rolling Stones. And they just did a book, uh, Brian Jones, Butterflies in the Park. Uh, Butterflies in the Park, referring to the butterflies that got released at the uh, outdoor concert after Brian Jones died uh, back in the 1960s. And uh, Dagan went to town on them, just decided, uh, okay, this is going to be a state-of-the-art uh, hardcover uh, with these Brian Jones photographs. Um, Michael, why can't, why can't I think of his last name? Anyway, uh, and uh, he, he, he got so immersed in it and decided, I'm just going to do everything with this that I always wanted to do with the hardcover. Uh, I forget what they were priced at, um, $300, $400, $500. And it was was practically a break-even thing because he put so much into the book to make it the most lavish production possible. And not only did that, but only did 150 of them. Now... Picture what that's doing to Rolling Stones fans worldwide who know uh, Megan James' reputation from uh, his Andy Warhol books and uh, uh, Billy Nane and, uh, well, just like a bottom list of, bottomless list of, of amazing photographers and amazing books. But there's only 150 of these. Uh, so... What's happening, of course, is that the Brian Jones book is already going regularly for over $1,000, if you can find one being auctioned online. And the other thing about Dagan is that he never reprints. Uh, He does the best possible job he can do on that book, and then he moves on to other books. This This is the core of his satisfaction with doing these things is making an immaculate, immaculate art object and then leave it alone. That one was done. Now I want to move on and do this one over here. I'm not, I'm not trying to figure out how to get everybody a copy of this. I'm trying to figure out how to make the best 150 copies that exist of this. If you compare the server <laughs> with audience to the Rolling Stones audience, both in terms of numbers and in terms of who has the deepest pockets, you can imagine what this Brian Jones book is going to be going for in five years, 10 years, 20 years. Um, Well, you can't really imagine because we don't know uh, how badly currency is going to erode in the meantime and uh, how stingy people are are going to get about on the market. So uh, what I'm doing is answering uh, Michael's question, will there only be 150 signed and numbered sets of I Society to Regency edition?
position, yes, that will be it. And I am making suggestions from my side of the equation, knowing the service audience, and saying, um, if we announced that these books are going to be available on Waverly Press, starting at, you know, just pick a, pick a day and time out of the air, uh, 2.30 in the morning uh, on, uh, on a Monday, uh, Michael R. will book off work <laughs> to make sure that he's sitting there 